Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health is the most shocking and inhumane. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. Our topic of discussion today is Sri Lanka's current health crisis. Where are we heading as a nation? To discuss all this and more, we've invited five guests to our studios this evening. And all five of them are from the field of medicine, as well as Dr. Thinuan Vikramasinghe, General Committee Member of the GMOA or the Government Medical Officers Association. Dr. Thinuan, I'll pose a question to you because we all now know by now that there is a crisis in Sri Lanka. I want to uh, drag your attention to the statement that was made by the Minister of Health, Kehili Rambukwella, on the 22nd of June 2023 in Parliament. He says that if no funds are received to purchase medicines, he will resign from his portfolio. Now, we are in a deeper crisis. Don't you think the minister in charge has to resign and an independent investigation should be carried out to what is going on in the country at present? Okay. Thank you very much, first of all, for inviting GMY for this valuable discussion. So, starting it in a professional uh, point of view, I would like to mention that the crisis that we are having today, as the minister told, it's not only about the funds. So fund is one factor, that's true, exchange deficiency. On top of that, we have the officials inefficiency. Number two is we have corruptions and frauds. Number three, we had a pandemic. So all these factors contribute to the current crisis. I would rather call it a catastrophe because it has become an emergency now. So you asked me about the changing of the minister, whether it be a, a, a solution for this problem. In the point of GMOA view, I think that changing the face of the minister is not only the solution. It has gone beyond that. So we need to address many more aspects of this problem to come to a solution. Some may be short term, some may be long term. As we, as we know, we have five major problems in the stage now. If you talk about number one is we have lack of supplies. Number two, we are having poor quality of drugs. Mm. And number three is we are having a shortage of drugs. And the drug prices has gone up, so the affordability of the consumers is low now. And we recently heard that there are a lot of shortcomings in consumables and breaking down of investigation procedures. If you go to the Cancer Institute Maharagama, there are five linear accelerators that they are treating for the cancer patient. One of them is out of order, which is specifically designed for pediatric patients. So we are not treating for the pediatric patients in uh, Cancer Institute from this linear accelerator at the moment. So if you go to the outside, it will cost about 5 to 15 lakhs per treatment. So that is one aspect. And the last aspect is that the human resource management problem in the country. So when it comes to the holistic approach, what happens is, people is losing the trust on government health sector mm. but but i want to i want to drag your attention uh, dr tenwan uh, let's look at the last 10 years let's not look at that far uh, dr professor indika dr vinya dr padma spoke about and also dr gunnarath spoke about how we had a wonderful healthcare system in the country in the 70s and uh, we've been able to record very good numbers in even child mortality cases in the country for a very long period of time but let's look at the last 10 years. Now, we are talking about a crisis like this now when there is a minister in charge, when the NMRA seems to be somewhat defunct in terms of what's going on. Uh, let's look at the uh, systems that have been implemented. We don't know what happened. Uh, so there's a lot of red lights uh, that we are seeing right now in the healthcare system in the country. Who is responsible? Actually, it is very difficult to pinpoint at one person. Because a lot of people say that the minister is irresponsible. Because uh, the minister is bringing down drugs uh, based on his women and fancy. Because we know that uh, there, is a, there is an aspect called wavering of registration. Um, without uh, going to the NMRA to buy uh, drugs beyond this, through the wavering of registration uh, in, the, in the code of ethics in the, in the NMR. So we know that the minister has to give his nod at the end of the day. So isn't it the minister who is responsible for all this? Minister is only one aspect. 
as I see that. Yeah. According to the GMO's view, there are five main entities in government health sector that coordinate this drug problem. If you just think about the drug problem. One is the Ministry of Health. Then it comes to the MSD. Then it comes to the NMRA. Then it comes to the SPC when you say and MSD, it's a medical supplies division. Medical supplies right? division. Then it comes to the NMRA. Then it comes to the SPC and SPMC. So when you are not having coordination among these five bodies, if you if you go through this Auditor General's report that has been published in 2022 May, it clearly elaborates that this coordination mechanism is not there among these five bodies. So if the SPC doesn't know what are the drugs manufactured in SPMC. They just try to import them from can other I, countries. Can I, Dr. Tenwan, can I ask you a very quick question? So all these five bodies that you spoke about comes under the Minister of Health. True. A am I right? Yeah. So ultimately, the ball has to stop in the Minister of Health's court. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. The responsible person ultimately is the Minister of Health. Mm -hmm. But right. not only him. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of officials under him. Because at lot the end of, of the day, he is the one who appoints individuals to these bodies in question. But there are certain. There is a planning unit in ministry. Mm -hmm. There is a procurement unit in ministry. There is a bio biomedical engineering unit in ministry. These people are the officials oh, so that. Everyone is robbing. They, they are people who are I in every I aspect. I didn't know that, Doctor Dinwan. No, no. no, I was saying everyone is robbing. Well, I'm, not, I'm not telling everyone lo ah. robbing, but I'm telling these bodies are responsible for this crisis. Ah, okay, okay. All these three bodies. So these are under minister. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but changing of the minister, the face changing is not only the solution here. Doctor Dinwan, now we are a country. In 2017, the Minister of Health had to go to Singapore to do his <laughs> operation. Yeah. So, will the public have any confidence in the healthcare system in Sri Lanka? Yeah, I want to just mention one more point to you. That if you talk about the per capita health budget, mm. the US is spending 12,900 USD per capita health budget. But we are spending only 161 USD per capita. Mm -hmm. But we are in par with same indices, at health indices as US. So, that is the health system we are having. So, although we blame to the ministers and all these officials, despite of all these problems, health staff, health of health people, the staff, health, entire health staff has managed to maintain the health system up to now. Right. Dr. Tenwan Vikramasinghe, a general committee member of the GMO. Now, Dr. Tenwan, uh, the GMO president uh, is not as active as the former president, no? No, that is not a true fact, actually. Ah. The president is there. Ah, we are lined up behind him he is the one who is guiding up up to now and we are under his cover but not like the former president who used to advise uh, president gotabe rajapaksa that depends on, uh, upon different characters and all that, but that, that's not <laughs> that anymore, no that different characters act in different ways but that leadership has changed there. leadership is there but that situation has changed the status quo has changed you can see so you can see in the out, I outcome i can see from your face also <laughs> some positivity is there <laughs> right <laughs> let me uh, dr tenwood i want to ask this question because since uh, you are representing gmo and you have large membership you know among all the hospitals now we see deaths we see uh, low quality drugs we see uh, 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 you know dollar shortage and uh, low quality imports and, and we are talking about a crisis. How far this crisis can worsen? Fully speaking, it has become a catastrophe now. You know that health emergency is there now. If you talk about the hospital-wise, we have branch unions in every hospital. So we are getting feedback from those hospitals. So what are those feedbacks? So we got one incident in Peradeni. You know that what happened is the prescriber is ultimately the doctor. He is the one who is writing the drug. So if something crisis, something problematic happens in an ETU, emergency treatment unit, when the drug is prescribed and some problem happens to that patient, the repercussion will come to that doctor. No one will take care about the other one. The people will come and damage the property of the doctor. So we got some incident happening in Anuradhapura also. And again, we had some incident in Panadura. So all these incidents still they are in under, under investigations. Peradeni one we are thinking that is anaphylaxis, but still they have not given a true conclusive this thing, the postmortem thing also in an open verdict. So the feedback that we are coming from the hospitals, every day we are getting information that this drug is not available there. This uh, consumable is not available there. So we can't perform this surgery because this item is not there. And this drug is expired, so we don't have additional stocks to perform. So, the, ultimately, the smooth healthcare delivery system throughout the country, especially the peripheries, 
has collapsed. It's imminent. It is almost collapsed now. No, but Dr. Tenwan, I remember a few months ago, there was a big how she had remember at COPE yeah, yeah. About, yeah. about a system that was brought in and uh, around 600 million rupees was spent. Now, what has happened to that system? Because in Sri Lanka, everything is like a gas bottle, like a bottle of soda. No, you open the bottle, suddenly the gas comes and then people forget. They forget it. Yeah, system but, means for, for what purpose? Uh, for the medical supplies division was linked with the hospitals in Sri Lanka. So, when there is a, when there is a shortage, automatically the MST is alarmed that there is a particular drug in question that is of shortage. And then the drugs are being dispatched accordingly. Yeah, so, going to the ERP system. ERP system. ERP system. Yeah. If you look at this Auditor General's reports in May 2022, this clearly mentions that computerized, lacking of a computerized system linking the MSD and the other corporate body, the bodies that are linked with this drug distribution and supplies and all, is a main problem with this drug crisis. So, although we spoke about this uh, APR system in the COP and all, Although they say that the system is this much, uh, this much value 600 million or something like that, still practically the system is not there in the hospitals. Yeah. There, were, there are certain hospitals, it was linked earlier also. If you talk about the uh, Javadanapur hospital, yes, they have a system. If you talk about uh, Karapiti hospital, they may have a system, but it is not a generalized system. So when a drug is shortage, so state about Padavia hospital, or talk about the uh, Mana hospital, or talk about the Silavatur hospital, so you don't have a system when a drug or consumable is in the low stocks there. No one get alarms. So Dr. Tenwan, do you think that this is a problem of the, the flaws of central planning and that we need to decentralize this? The thing is that although some, some drugs are not available in medical supplies division, that yeah. same drug available in some hospital. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, so that is mal, you, mal, do you, mal, do you think that, you think that for example, the, the provincial health ministries hmm. Uh, who are sort of who who can or who have the capacity to look at like uh, hospitals in their province. So you're making the instead of having to look at the entire island, you're looking at the smaller this thing, and the responsibility has also been delegated. But Do you think that we need to decentralize it to make the system work better? It may have pros and both pros and cons. So decentralizing means not good always. So if you have a central system that is functioning well, the small island that we are talking about. Yeah. 65,536 km, uh, kilometers are there. So, if you are talking about that system, yeah. if it is a good system centrally, it is easy to manage and easy to distribute equally if the system is there. But yeah. as long as the corruption is up top there. But, 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 but uh, wasn't yeah. there a system already in place? There wasn't is a system. Wasn't there a system that was good enough? Now, where is that system? The problem is that when, when, when there is a good system, things go smoothly. But what happened was that there was a dollar crisis at the beginning. And because of this dollar crisis, Sri Lanka was having problems in importing drugs. Then what happened was, there was a shortage in drugs here. Then, people were going for these emergency purchases, which has a lot of irregularities as Dr. Gunaratna said correctly. So once it goes to that extent, it is very difficult to revert it back to the normal system. I think uh, Doctor, just, yeah. just a minute uh, just to summarize uh, I mean, come, going back to my earlier question so what you say is like uh, the, the the worsening of crisis basically you know people might come and attack doctors there is a risk because we are the one who are prescribing at the end and people think that doctors has a responsibility to check the quality of the drug before giving that is the lay people's mentality, mentality. that is how they feel I saw that certain social media posts saying that why doctors are not checking drugs before giving. Because they don't know about this NMRA and how this regularization done, what is the scope of NMRA, how these things regularize and how the drugs. So once we are having a set of drugs at hospital, we don't have any other option rather than prescribing that. And the most worst case is if we, if we, if we want to write five drugs. Only true drugs are available in the hospital. Other three drugs we have to write to the external pharmacy. No, but yeah, let me so. let me add one more point to that. If you talk about the pay of a doctor, if you consider Sri Lankan cons consultant getting 88,000 basic salary in Sri Lanka. But if you go to a country that people are migrating these days, they are paying 3.5 to 4 million in that country. But still our consultant was staying in Sri Lanka and also staying in the government sector. But not only this salary problem, 
but because of professional dissatisfaction because of the frustration as dr vinya told correctly and also not ava not available of this career pathways so there are very limited career development pathways for doctors in sri lanka but consultants also do private practice in sri lanka and millions no that's that's another point even in foreign countries they can do private practice i'm talking about the government health system if you talk about the nhs in uk and if you talk about the sri lankan government sector the salary difference and the pay difference and the living and the working environment the structure they have to work and the frustration that they are getting from the pressure they are getting is totally different and even so, if you account for the difference in the cost of living the gap is still very high it is very high when the covid vaccine came there was opposition ministers who were saying the government it's from government to govern that also they were trying to make a quick buck of around uh, $5 no even in case of government to government it has to go through in mri that's right. why happened uh, it for vaccines yeah. and yeah. there was a delay in mri mm. giving yeah. approval, approval and that's why government yeah. was unhappy even in uk certain certain number of drugs are brought from india actually Mm. So India is the largest drug maker in certain certain uh, certain varieties. Mm. So they are getting down from India and Bangladesh. But the thing is that they go through that system, they go through that process. So they don't get the quality problem in their aspect. So overall, yeah. Shahar, just to give some context to it, uh, the number of medicine, the SKUs or the medicine that are used in government hospitals, account to approximately you know, 1,800. Mm. So out of this 1,800, as Dr. Uh, Gunaratna spoke about, around 600 to 800 drugs are essential drugs. And what happens, Dr. Gunaratna, when these drugs are not available? Now, you work at... Uh, yeah, let me correct this. you. Yeah. There are 14 vital drugs. Yeah. There are 646 essential, essential drugs. Essential drugs, that's right. Then there are non-essential drugs of 486. Right. Total come to 1,146, actually. Right, okay. So, out of that 1,146, there was a committee appointed in the ministry, GMO is one of the stakeholders. We were giving proposals that this 1,164 drugs can be lowered to 850 or something. Mm, mm. So that will save us around 10 to 20 billion from our drug budget. Mm. That so, proposal yeah. was made, actually that scrutinization was done and right. the pro proposal was submitted. But unfortunately, all the colleges agree. All the, the colleges, colleges agree. agree. But still, unfortunately, it was not implemented. So, uh, the doctor, uh, Doctor Tenwan, now uh, you work at Sri Jawaharlal Nehru University uh, uh, hospital. hospital. Am I, am I correct? Yeah. 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 So, so uh, the Sri Jawaharlal University is somewhat of a semi-government uh, um, hospital, right? So you can pay money and also get treatment. Yes. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, yes, Doctor um, Tenwan. So, when someone comes in to the hospital and tries to pay money and buy a drug. Are you trying to tell me that drug is not available for those who have the money and those who don't have the money? Let me clarify you about the Jayadanpur Hospital first. Yeah, it, yeah. Is a, it is a fee-paying hospital. Yeah. Everyone comes there has to pay a fee. Yeah. And sometimes they are doing a private cases and some are non-private cases. All those things have a bill. Mm. But when a patient comes to the hospital, even if they have money, there may be instances that they don't get the exact medicine that they want. We may have to subsidize that one. We may have to replace that one with another one. So when you say you want, you have to replace it, are you trying to replace it with a brand name or a generic name? Uh, when there is a prescribed drug, say that you have been prescribed paracetamol, so you can't issue another drug for that. We can change the brand, mm. but we can't change the generic name. So you're saying the, 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 the brand is, are the brands not available or the drugs not available? Both. Sometimes the brand is not there, mm. sometimes the drug is not there. So I'm working in the intensive care unit. Sometimes the essential drugs that we need in our intensive care unit is not available in some days. So then, then, then what is the option? Only option is we have to write it to the outside pharmacies. We have to give a prescription <coughs> to, so patient has to get them out. Ah, so you're saying government hospitals don't have the drug, but private hospitals and private pharmacies, pharmacies. have the drug? Yeah, yes. that, is a, that is the situation. That's the sure, That's a hell of a story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's Dr. one reason yeah. the out-of-pocket expenditure is very high in Sri Lanka. So even if you this go to close to fifty percent, no? Yeah, oh, it's fifty percent. Forty-six percent. Forty-six. Almost fifty so percent. Even if you go to a government clinic, there may be drugs that are not available, so the doctors still have to. So there has been, it. Professor Indika, you, you are correct because there have been instances where people have gone to the castle uh, hospital, the maternity hospital. 
and uh, before admission, the doctors give you a list of the drugs that need to be purchased from outside the hospital and, and be brought. And I have seen in some uh, state hospitals where they, they have a board say, today you don't have these drugs in this hospital. And the sad thing is that, just take an example of a diabetic patient, if he's taking three drugs for diabetes, if he comes to the clinic and say, we don't have to, we don't have all three drugs to prescribe. We don't have it at a government hospital. So we are writing one to the hospital pharmacy and two to the outside. And patient don't, don't have that ability to go and buy them from outside. What they do is they take only that one drug. So ultimate burden will be again on the government, government health system. Because, because, because the patient will get, get hyperglycemic yeah, yeah, and he yeah, will get yeah. complications. Com so he will come back to the hospital the with a lot of... Combination of medicines. Yeah, the health. Combination that's needed to treat the condition. So because of this problem, the GMOA gave a proposal to the minister telling that at least one or two essential drugs for the common diseases, say that high blood pressure, for cholesterol, for uh, diabetes or whatever it is, make it available at least that two drugs to an affordable price. Give a concession to that two drugs. So at least patient will I'm go and... Doing that. They are not doing that. That is the unfortunate thing. So, so I want to give uh, each speaker uh, three minutes each uh, to wrap up and to suggest a way forward for Sri Lanka. What must we really do as a nation? Because I think uh, those who are watching the show tonight, uh, may it be the government or the individuals at the NMRA or even the Minister of Health, what is the message you have for them? And what is the message you have for the public? Uh, when they go to take medicine, what must they be cautious of? Because at the end of the day, it's their lives. Uh, ultimately, they will have to pay the price. Ultimately, their loved ones are going to be affected. So what is the message you have for both the government and the people? So let's start off with Dr. Tenwan Vikramasinghe. Yeah, let me tell you that. First of all, you asked about that. Uh, once you go to the, in three weeks time, when you go to a pharmacy, you don't get medicine. Mm. Rather than that, the problem will be there will be no one to prescribe the medicine in some time. Mm. So to get the medicine, you have to have a prescription. No, I, Dr. Dhanon, I agree with you fully because yeah. the consultant that I visit every six months is not in Sri Lanka anymore. He has gone overseas. Yeah, and the thing is that the central and that's must... A, that, that's a bit of truth, unfortunately, because yeah. he said he doesn't want to live in these present circumstances and conditions. So the central might function for a few years' time, but the peripherals will be collapsed. That is inevitable if this brain brain continues. Mm. So. We are talking about two problems today. One is this drug issue, one is this brain drain problem. So to this drug issue, the first that we have to have temporary short-term plans and also long-term plans. So long-term plan is we need to have a full-fledged state-of-art quality assurance laboratory, which we don't have at the moment. So if you want to, if we are, what we are doing is if we have a problem with ceftriaxone, we withdraw that drug and send sample to some overseas countries and we are waiting for three, four months until the report comes. And next time it happens on another drug, we do stop that one and send the, that is the same thing that is happening. We are putting temporary solution to each ev event. So rather than that, we need to have a fully fledged state of art quality assurance lab, which has mm. international accreditation. But it may take three, four years. So until such time, we have temporary solutions, such as we have laboratories in our university sector. We have laboratories in our private sector. So we can look into them. We can see what are the available facilities there and we can utilize them for the moment. So that is about the drug issue. And there is no any the argument that NMRA has to be doing their responsibility. Mm. There is a scope that they have mentioned in their website, but is their scope, which they are not doing at the moment. So that has to be re-established. When you're talking about the brain brain thing, we have identified, identified 10 problems in this brain brain problem. And we have given 10 solutions for these 10 problems, starting from financial uh, facilities, starting from non-financial incentives, developing working conditions and living conditions, schooling of the doctors, and the professional development of the doctors, career development pathway of doctors, and to retain these people in Sri Lanka and specifically in the government sector. Mm, mm. So we have been doing this one throughout the history and we have been maintaining equal and equitable healthcare system throughout the country. The same facility that you are getting from the NHSL can be get from the Jaffna Hospital also. So to regain this thing, to stop this brain drain, we need to give these monetary and also non-monetary facilities to these people to keep them inside the country. 
So these are the two aspects that we are thinking about as GMOA. We have make 10 proposals for that. If you want to go through, we have given this to media also. Mm. So there are 10 proposals, 10, 10 problems. We have find out 10 solutions. I, I'm very skeptic on this, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Then want to be very honest, but yeah. we take what, what you're saying. You no, what I mean yeah. is that if we want this problem to be at least to be handled at this moment, we need to reverse that one at this moment. Otherwise, if we, if we continue this one for another six weeks, the number of people who are sitting for exams, the number of people who are migrating will be more than this. Thank you very much, Dr. Tenwan Vikramasinghe, representing the GMOA. Thank you.